So you started with videos and yes. you said it and you're still on it. You're on radio. Like yeah. what, how did that opportunity present itself? Because there are a bunch of people who are doing videos right now, hoping to create something bigger, right? But they don't even know how to look for opportunities like you have. So what, how was that presented? Did you always want to be on radio? What was that like? So, no, I did not always want to be on radio, but in 2002, I'm this guy named Pretty Willie, and then it's this other guy in St. Louis that everybody knows. Yeah, go ahead and say it. Nelly, like, he's the guy. <laughs> so the St. Lunatics, they come out. They're on 95.5. I'm on, I'm on 100.3 to beat. 95.5 comes up with Lunatic Radio on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And then on Sunday, um, they was like, yo, we got to do something different. Who the next big guy in St. Louis? They was like, Pretty Willie. He about to sign. So they do this pretty radio thing. And I do it. Literally, I'm just reading the paper like, uh, your number one station for hip-hop and R&B is 100.3 The Beat? Yeah. And so I started to do that. The show blows up. It's the number one show on the weekend. I have no idea exactly what I'm doing. And so 10 years later, 8 to 10 years later, um, I'm serving. Like, And really just put this in your back pocket. The greatest among us will serve. If it's something you want to do, serve your way through. Don't try to get paid too early. And so I'm serving Dwight Stone. He's an amazing DJ, a program director. He's doing his thing. I'm staying consistent with my videos, but I'm serving his vision. And literally, long story short, Tom Joyner, his team, sees me on Instagram and YouTube doing my little funny videos. And all throughout that um, time when I was on the boat with them, because they brought me into their fantastic voice, fantastic voice, did I say that right? Um, And so I'm like doing everything they need me to do. My wife is is saying, why they keep calling you? Why they keep on calling? It's 2 o'clock in the morning. They want you to do another video. Right, right. I'm like, babe. They done pay. They done pay ten thousand dollars. Mm. Call me at that time, boy. Ten thousand dollars. I thought I was cheating. If you give me ten thousand dollars to run my mouth, oh my god. So it's ten thousand dollars. I mean, trip included, of course. And they're calling, but every time they ask, I show up and I execute. Hey, Willie Moore Jr. here. What up, y'all? It's your man. I do their whole boat thing. And then, unfortunately, a guy who was on radio, he had a, a crazy scenario, and they had to remove him from that spot. And so they had Mary Mary, they had uh, Dietrich Hatton, Kiara Shear, all these gospel greats, and then they allowed me to interview. Now, let me tell y'all something, and I'm going to be serious with you, Nikki. Mm. This is my own goal. I got a big social media following. They about to put me on radio. My goal, I tell my team, bruh, we finna pump up at Willie Moore Jr. Live so much. If we can get 10,000 extra people, we can keep selling T-shirts and masterclass. Facts. <laughs> That's Facts. What we're doing. I, I had no idea that they were called. So I get a call from John Maxwell, the John. Mm. So he catches the videos. So they asked me to come out to one of his exclusive creme de la creme places, right? And um, he's speaking. They play my videos. I get up and I say hi. They pay me some more money to be there. They pay me a lot of money there. And I didn't do too much. They paid me so much, I literally started picking up, uh, like, people's plates while we were eating. <laughs> hey, you need that? Because I ain't did nothing. They just played my video. Right. You know? Like, I think it was, like, $7,500. Like, I was like, man, they paid $7,000 mm. for, like, 45 minutes. I wasn't even on stage. I was, mm. I'm like, you going to eat that? I'm going to take it for you. <laughs> like, I turned into the, the bus boy at this point. I guess I get a call when I get in the car, as if the day couldn't get any better. And a young lady from Reach Media, she said... Don't tell them I told you, but they chose you. Mm. And they're going to put you on in a syndicated radio spot. I never had a job in my life. I did not know what to ask for. Luckily, I had some great lawyers. And this is the first time I ever had to talk to an HR department at that time. You know what I mean? They was like, how many days you want off? I was like, 40 days, 40 nights? Jesus, I don't know. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> I want to go when I want to go, you know, but God has been so faithful in that area. So I would tell any person right now, like, sometimes you don't know where to go. I wish I had this plan where I was like, I'm going to be a radio guy and I'm going to be on television. Of course, I had aspirations to be in those areas, but I was just wanting to serve. Right. Like, you know, what I see so many times now is that people are so in a rush to be the man that they forget the opportunity to be a servant first. You know what I mean? Like, whatever your metaphysical 
orientation is, like whether it's Jesus or you just say Allah, like you realize that the service, the service part of it all is what expedites the walk. And I just hate when people don't want to do the service part. And they're so in a rush or they just bother the hell out the leader like, man, my bills do. Nobody wants to hear that. Serve quietly and do what you're supposed to do. So. Mm. <laughs>